Hello. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. All right. So before we start, let's see a show of hands. If, who, raise your hand if this is the first time you're learning about Algorand. First time? OK. Let's see a, ra a hand if you're a developer. Oh, amazing. Love it. OK, well, if this is your first time learning about Algorand, if you're a developer, well, you're at the right place. I'm a developer relations advocate for the Algorand Foundation. And we have Joe Pony here, who is also my colleague, DevRel engineer. And he's also the creator of TealScript, which is the JavaScript-like smart contract language on Algorand. Now let's start with the million dollar question. What is Algorand? Algorand was founded in 2019, well, the in 2019, and it was founded by Sylvia McCauley, who is an MIT professor and a Turing Awards winner in cryptography. What Turing Awards is, it's basically Nobel Prize for Computer Science. So it's the highest level that you can get as a cryptographer. He's also the co creator of the cryptographic method that is being highly used and studied right now for blockchain scalability. He's also, he also created the verifiable random function, which allows you to pseudo random values in a verifiable manner. Back in the days, Vitalik Buterin has said all blockchain needs these three things decentralization scalability, and security. But he also said, all three, you got to sacrifice at least one. And he called it the blockchain trilemma. Sylvia McCauley disagreed with this claim. And he said that Algorand blockchain has solved the blockchain trilemma. Now, I know where your head is going when you hear that. You, it sounds fake. There's always a catch. So let's dive into each one of these components and see how Algorand sells in all three of them. First start with blockchain security. Is Algorand secure? When we say a blockchain is secure, we mean the data that is stored on the blockchain is both permanent and authentic. Now, for data to be permanent and authentic, the process that adds the new data to the blockchain has to be secured and decentralized. So how is Algorand secured? We use this unique consensus protocol called pure proof of stake, and this is how this is the protocol that is securing the Algorand blockchain. Now, when Sylvia created Algorand, he didn't want to use the, prop, the popular proof of stake consensus protocols out there, like delegated proof of stake, because he didn't believe those were decentralized enough. For example, delegated proof of stake works is the entire network, they don't participate in consensus, but all they do is they delegate their tokens to a small group of computers that actually participate in consensus. Now, the problem is, because there's only a small group of nodes that are actually doing the work, that itself can be centralized. And two, these group of nodes are pre-known to the public. So it creates a possibility of attack vectors, um, you know, bribing these group of nodes. So it could compromise the consensus pro process. So Silvio came up with this unique consensus protocol. He wanted a more decentralized and more pure way of achieving consensus. So here's how it works. I'm going to leave out a lot of technical de details. But for every consensus round, there's three stages. The first stage is called block proposal. Now, at the first stage, the VRF, the, the technology that can get random values, goes to the entire network and randomly select a group of nodes to propose. So we have multiple blocks propo proposed by these nodes. And then we move over to stage two which is called soft vote. Now the VRF goes to the network again and randomly selects another group of nodes to form a committee. And this committee reduces that no, uh, multiple block proposals down to one. And then we move to the stage three, which is called certify vote. In stage three, the VRF again select, randomly selects another group of nodes to form a committee, and that committee votes whether this block proposal is valid or not. If it's valid, it gets added to the blockchain, and the process repeats itself. So that's how consensus achie is achieved on the algorithm blockchain. So why is this securing the algorithm block uh, the blockchain? Remember, I said that the VRF chooses these committee from the entire network. Now, everyone who have at least 0.1 algo, which makes the account a valid algorithm account, and just say, hey, VRF, I want to participate in consensus, 
the VRF consider them when, they're, when it's randomly selecting these nodes. So the entire network can participate in consensus, therefore making this one of the most decentralized way of achieving consensus. Another reason, when this selection is happening, is it's random selection using the VRF. And because it's random, everybody has a chance to participate in consensus. Pure proof of stake also allows instant finality on Algorand. And this is one of the most powerful features that the blockchain provides. Now remember, by stage two, we said that the committee reduces the number of block proposals down to one. So during the consensus round, you only have one proposal to consider. So there is no chance for two blocks to be added to the blockchain at the same time, which is a possibility in a lot of blockchain protocols out there, like Ethereum. So because there's only one pro block proposal, when a block is added to the chain, it is instantly final. No data on the chain will ever have a possibility of rolling back. So you can trust that all data recorded on the chain is permanent and authentic. And we also took the first step into making algorithm blockchain post-quantum secure. So we use this technology called state proof. And state proof um, uses a, a post-quantum security cryptographic method called Falcon Key to create a proof of the state of the blockchain. So now the entire history of the algorithm blockchain is post-quantum secure. Now I'm not saying we have 100% post-quantum security because um, transaction signing is still not post-quantum secure. So if quantum computing came around today, all new, all incoming transactions to the block won't be post-quantum secure. But at least we know that from this point and before to the genesis block, the entire history is post-quantum secure. I'm, s I'm telling you this because we are dedicated to security. And we, are, we already made the first step into making Algorand future-proof. And our track record shows this. The mainnet has been live since 2019 for over four years, and the Algorand blockchain has never uh, experienced downtime. Now, I'm not saying Algorand will never go down, because we're constantly upgrading the protocol, and software is bound to have errors and bugs. But I'm saying, one, the design of the Algorand protocol is so robust that it hasn't witnessed downtime yet, and two, the core protocol developers are dedicated to this mission, to continue to keep the Algorand blockchain available 24 seven. Okay, so Algorand is, um, I'll take questions after the presentation, thank you. So, Algorand is secured, but talking about blockchain security, we can't leave out decentralization. So, is Algorand decentralized? Now, whenever we talk about protocol decentralization, um, everybody has different definitions and <laughs> different thoughts, and all, it often becomes an ugly debate that nobody gets out of. So here I'm intentionally limiting um, to these two topics. When I say a blockchain is decentralized, I mean the consensus process is de decentralized, and also the ledger is decentralized. I've already said that pure proof of stake is one of the most decentralized way of achieving consensus because it includes the entire and I'm not just saying this. This is a Twitter account that automatically posts every day who the top proposer is and the smallest proposer is. And on January 30th, 2024, the smallest block proposer had zero algo in their wallet, which is the smallest amount of algo that you can hold. So this really shows you the power of pure proof of stake, that everyone is, um, uh, is involved in the consensus process. Now moving on to the second point, it's gotta have decentralized ledger. For the ledger to be decentralized, you gotta have a lot of computers storing the same record. That's what makes it de decentralized. And for that to happen, it has to be cheap and easy to run a node. So the foundation has released a one-click node where it makes it super easy to set up a node on your computer or on any hardware that you want. We also have community-made one-click nodes um, that you can use if you prefer, but it, it is continuously getting improved, so it is super easy to run a node on Algorand. Also, it's cheap to run a node. Unlike Ethereum, where you have to stake a lot of ETH, there is no minimum stake to be participating in consensus. Um, you only need that 0 0.1 algo that makes your account valid, and you're good to go. Now, 
government is not perfect, and it has its fair share of criticism. And the main criticism comes around, is Algorand decentralized? And these are the two criticisms. Some people say Algorand is centralized because it reli relies on relay nodes. Another criticism is that the Algorand blockchain currently doesn't incentivize nodes for participating in consensus. So let's see what's going on. Currently, the Algorand network has this structure where participation nodes that participate in consensus um, don't talk to each other directly. They have to go through relay nodes that relay the messages. Now, these relay nodes, all they do is they relay messages and they don't participate in consensus. So when it comes to consensus, um, it doesn't affect the de decentralization. But here's where the problem comes in. Relay nodes are expensive to run, so not everyone can run them. And also, currently, the group of relay nodes that are on the network were pre-selected by the Algorand Foundation. And this is where a lot of people get angry, that, that the f oh, the foundation has control of the network. Oh, this is not decentralized. Oh, they can uh, prevent my transaction from going through if they don't like me. Now, I want to clarify. Uh, if you really care about this, and if you really don't want to use relay nodes uh, that were pre-selected by the foundation, run your own relay node and configure your participation node to only talk to your relay node, therefore circumventing the pre-selected nodes. But still, it is a valid criticism. So we are actually going to be moving away from relay nodes and making them optional in the future. So we're going to be implementing a peer-to-peer -peer gossip protocol where the participation nodes talk to each other. And it, relay nodes will still be there. So if you choose to use them, you can do so. But in the long run, the plan is to completely remove relay nodes. Now let's move to the second uh, criticism where incentivized to participating consensus. Now, the reason why this is the case is because when Silvio created Algorand, his theory was that people would voluntarily run nodes if they care about the security of the chain. So if you are building your product on the blo Algorand blockchain, you will run a node because you would want that chain to be secure. It's kind of similar to how people are planting trees to make the Earth a healthier place, because we live on Earth. But we're actually going to be moving away from this initial theory that Sylvia had and be introducing uh, node incentivization. So when this goes live, every algorithm node that participated in consensus will be rewarded for their work. So we have this beautiful roadmap called the Algorand Gambit. And in 2024, protocol upgrades are planned to go live. And the consensus incentivization pro upgrade will come with the ready upgrade. And the peer-to-peer -peer gossip network upgrade will come with the Kappa Palenka variation upgrade. Now, there's an open discussion about these upgrades on GitHub. So if you want to share your insights or just get involved in that discussion, you can head to the our GitHub repo and um, share your insights there. OK, so now we know that the algorithm blockchain is both secured and decentralized. But usually, when the blockchain has those two things, it's slow. And the reason why it's slow is because when you have uh, when you have when the blockchain is decentralized, you have more nodes that you need to talk to to achieve consensus. Therefore, it's slow. So let's see how Algorand solves this problem. And we come back to our unique consensus protocol, pure proof of stake. Now remember, pure proof of stake involves the entire network to participate in a consensus. But how can we achieve that fast speed if the entire network is involved? Well, remember. Um, the group of nodes that actually do the work in, during the consensus round were randomly selected by the VRF, and there's only a small group of nodes that are actually doing the work. So although the entire network is considered to participate in consensus through random selection, the actual work is being done by only a small group of nodes, therefore allowing you to achieve both decentralization and scalability. So these are the three metrics that we talk about when we talk about blockchain speed. TPS, which is transaction per second, so how many transactions the, the blockchain can execute per second. We have block time, which is the time it takes for a newly proposed block to be added to the blockchain. And time to finality, which is the time it takes for the added block to become final. So Algorand currently can handle up to 10,000 TPS. It has about 2.8 second block time and has instant finality. Now let's touch a bit more on the instant finality part, because a lot of people get confused and angry about this. They say, oh, you can't 
you can't execute a transaction instantly. That's just physically impossible. We're not saying that. We're, there's still that 2.8 second block time. But we're saying that when the block is added to the chain, it is instantly final. So let's explore this concept a little bit more. On a lot of blockchain protocols, there's a possibility for two blocks to be added at the chain at the same time um, by chance. And when this happens, now the one source of truth that the blockchain record had is divided into two. So the entire network now have to make a decision which one of these chain is the true chain. So as time goes by, they all make a decision and they build on the chain that they think is the true chain. And when, as time goes by and when this becomes apparent, the shorter chain gets invalidated and all of the transactions that were included in the shorter chain gets rolled back. Now, because this is a possibility, these blockchain protocols usually recommend you to wait around six or seven blocks to be 100% certain that your transaction went through. So if you're talking about Ethereum, it currently has a block time of 15 seconds. If you're waiting six blocks, that's a minute and a half that you have to wait to be 100% certain. And that's in the best case scenario when the Ethereum blockchain is not congested. On Algorand, your transaction will go through, get executed, and be final in 2.8 seconds all the time, thanks to instant finality. Now let's talk about some unique Algorand features. ASAs. ASA stands for Algorand Standard Assets. Now, unlike Ethereum and a lot of blockchain out there, Tokens on Algorand are not smart contracts. So on Ethereum, fungible tokens are ERC-20, NFTs are ERC-721, and they're all smart contracts. So you have to deploy a smart contract to create tokens. Well, on Algorand, all you need to do is send an asset creation transaction to the network, and boom, your token's created. No contract needed. Now, there are two benefits that come from this. One, you don't need a smart contract, so you don't need to audit, audit your smart contract, and there's also no chance of incl including a security vulnerability to the contract. Because every smart contract, you, there, you can a either accidentally or intentionally include the security vulnerability, causing you know, a lot of people to lose money. Well, with ASAs, as long as, the, as long as the algorithm blockchain is secured, your token is safe. Second benefit. Um, it prevents reentrancy attack. So reentrancy attack is one of the most infamous uh, attacks that live on Ethereum, and it, ex it, ex it exists because every time a smart contract is dealing with tokens, it's got to make an external call to that token contract and call that transfer from method. Now, when you're making this external call, you're calling a contract that you have no control over, and you're taking a risk. And because you have to make that external call, and once that's finished, it comes back to the smart contract and continues the logic, that introduces the reentrancy attack. And if you are not careful as a developer, you could be causing a lot of trouble. Well, with ASAs, because it is just built into the protocol, there's no problem regarding that. Atomic transfers. Now, when you're building a blockchain-based application, uh, it usually includes a trade between two parties. Now, Blockchain is a trustless environment. There is no intermediary that's going to ensure that your, the trade happens in a fair manner. So for that trustless trade to happen in a fair manner, it's got to happen at the same time. For example, I want to buy a PS5, but it's all sold out. So I find this shady website and find this seller that's selling a PS5 for $300. I say, hey, I want to buy this PS5. And he's like, yeah, sure. Just send me the $300, and I'll send you the PS5. So I send him my $300, a couple days goes by, no, he just disappears, and I lose my $300. This is a problem because I had to trust that, that per the seller will send me my PS5 because that didn't happen simultaneously. So simultaneous transactions is very important in a blockchain environment. For blockchain protocols that doesn't provide this natively, uh, you have to come up with complex logic like hash time lock contracts to make this happen. But on Algorand, it is just right, you can use this right out of the box. It's very easy to um, group multiple transactions and execute them at the same time. Algorand is not an EVM chain. It, ha it uses this unique virtual machine called Algorand Virtual Machine. When Silvio created Algorand, <coughs> he said this in one of the conferences he attended. He said that the blockchain industry is so early that if we decide on the standard at this stage, 
we will be limiting the potential of this technology. So Sylvia wanted to do something more than what the EVM enabled back in the days. So when he was creating Algorand, he created a separate virtual machine called the Algorand Virtual Machine. The AVM understand this smart contract language called Teal, which is a low-level assembly language. Now, you as a developer won't be directly working with Teal. There's a higher-level language, so don't worry. But that's what the AVM understands. The AVM currently provides more than 180 opcodes, which is more than what EVM provides. It can handle up to 512 bits of mathematical accu um, accuracy, so you can deal with more larger numbers when you're doing mathematical operations. And also allows smart contracts to send transactions. And we call them inner transactions. OK, now let's talk about how Algorand is different from Ethereum. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you're a Solidity developer, we want you to bring the knowledge that you ha already have and just leverage that when you come to Algorand. You don't have to start from scratch. If you know what's different, as long as you know that, you'll be able to um, apply the knowledge that you have. So that's why we're doing this. On Ethereum, gas fees are dynamic. And it changes based on the congestion of the network and how complex your transaction is. On Algorand, transaction fees are always fixed to 0.001 algo. And that's 0.001 algo for a simple payment app, a transaction, and a complex smart contract call. Uh, there are two cases when this goes up. One, if your smart contract call is so complex and opcode heavy that it exceeds the opcode limit. When that happens, you have to group two smart contract calls together to make that happen. So the transaction fee would go up to 0.002 algo. Another case is when the blockchain gets in, uh, congested. So for some reason, if the TPS exceeds 10,000, um, the nodes will pick up whoever have the highest transaction fee. Gas fees on Ethereum are always paid. So if your transaction fails for whatever reason, you're still paying that gas fee. You're not getting that back. Is it small now? Less than the full amount. But you're still paying, right? Yeah. Yeah? That's awesome. Uh, because back in the days, we were just paying the full amount, right? Nice. Um, on Algorand, you only pay your transaction fees when the transaction gets executed. So um, you as a user, when you're using Algorand-based applications, you don't have to worry about wasting transaction fees. If it fails for whatever reason, your algos are never leaving your account. But that's good information. Thank you for letting me know that. Tokens. I mentioned this before, so I'll mention it briefly. Tokens on Ethereum are smart contract-based. Tokens on Algorand are built into the protocol. There are two types of accounts on Ethereum, externally, externally owned accounts, so EOAs, and contract accounts. Externally owned accounts are accounts that users have to interact with smart contracts and with the Ethereum blockchain. And contract accounts are smart contracts. So smart contracts on Ethereum are all uh, accounts. So they can receive and send assets and send transactions. On Algorand, there's only one type of account. And it's called Algorand accounts. And it's like EOAs on Ethereum. But what about smart contracts? So Algorand smart contract itself is not an account. So it doesn't have a unique identifier as an address, but it has an app ID, which is just a number. But all Algorand smart contracts are linked to an Algorand account. So it can do the same thing that the Ethereum smart contract can do. But let's see this example to really understand what's going on here. Let's say we have an account A that is calling this deposit function defined inside of smart contract B. I'm going to use this. <laughs> now, when you're, this deposit function is a simple method where uh, you're sending a certain amount of algos to the smart contract, and it's updating the balance. You're not directly sending that algo to the smart contract, because this is not an account. So you're automatically grouping a payment transaction and sending it to the linked application account. So that's what's happening. So that's something that you have to understand as a developer when you're building an application on Algorand. But at the end of the day, you can do the same thing that you can do on Ethereum. Smart contract storages. Currently on Ethereum smart contracts, 
um, the way you store is within this giant 2 to the 256 slots, where each slot is 32 byte each. So you can store all types of data types, like arrays, uh, strings, numbers. And if it goes beyond 32 bytes, it gets divided into multiple slots. Now, when you're deleting um, these storages, you actually only get 50% of that storage fee back. And I was pr really intrigued when I was researching this. Um, and the reason for this is because whenever you send a storage deletion transaction, the nodes are the ones that are going to have to pay that to the user. So if you're ref refunding 100% amount of the storage fee, the nodes don't want to execute that transaction. So it disincentivizes anyone to execute them, therefore preventing any type of storage deletion. So to prevent this from happening, um, it's limited to 50% so that the nodes will pick up these transactions. Now let's talk about Algorand. There are three types of storages, global state, local state, and box storage. Global state lives on the smart contract and is accessible to the entire contract. So if you have a state that should be accessible everywhere, this is where you want to store it. Local state is user-specific state. So if you want to keep separate state for each user, this is where you store it. But this state doesn't actually get stored on the smart contract, but it gets stored on the user's account. So on Algorand, we have this unique feature called opt-in. So accounts can opt into smart contracts to create their unique local state. So if you have user-specific data, that's where you store it. Box storage. Box storage is very similar to uh, Ethereum smart contract storage. It's you can create infinite amount of boxes. Uh, if you have a lot of data to store, you can create a box on demand and store it here. On Algorand, if you want to delete your storage, you get 100% of the storage feedback um, at, uh, at the deletion. So when you're creating storage on Algorand, um, this is something that you have to, you don't really have to worry about if the storage is temporary. Lastly, reentrancy attack. Now I touched on this a bit before, but like I said, on Ethereum it's possible because tokens are smart contracts. So when a smart contract wants to deal with tokens, like receive and send tokens, um, it's got to make these external calls to these token contracts. And when that external call is being hap is is happening and it gets called back to the smart contract, that's where the reentrancy thing happens. And if you're not careful as a developer when you're writing your smart contract, this could cause a lot of problem. Now in Algorand, like I said, ASAs are built in, so this is not a problem. But there's also another reason why it's not possible, and it is because it is prevented on the AVM level. So even if you try to mimic this by having another contract and you try to so let's say there's contract A and contract B. And contract A calls contract B, and contract B tries to call contract A again, it fails. And this is, um, so as a developer, you don't have to worry about reentrancy attack, whereas on Ethereum, the responsibility falls on you as a developer to learn about reentrancy attack and be careful not to have this security vulnerability. Now, those are very high level um, overview of the differences. But if you want to learn more, um, I've created a complete playlist on the Algorand Developers YouTube channel where I go more in depth on, in each of these concepts. So uh, if you search on Go uh, YouTube, Algorand Developers, you can find the channel. And if you like the content, like and subscribe so that more people can learn about Algorand and be inspired to build on here. OK, so far we've talked about the protocol. But you as a developer might not even care. You might just be like, I don't care about the protocol. Is it easy for me to build on here? And can I just get my idea into reality here? So now let's talk about the developer tools and the smart contract languages that you will be using when you're building on the Algorand blockchain. First up, AlgoKit. AlgoKit is an all-in-one developer tool that streamlines your developer journey from beginning to deploying on mainnet. Alkit was introduced in Q1 of 2023, so just about a year ago. And we've been adding new features more and more so that we can make your developer experience as good as it gets. So let's talk about some of the features it has. Before Alkit, setting up your development environment to build on Algorand was a nightmare. We, we used to do uh, boot camps and hackathons, and majority of the developers gave up on the development environment setup process. It was that bad. 
Well, with AlgoKit, now all you need to do is run AlgoKit Bootstrap in your terminal, and it will do everything for you. It will install all the dependencies, uh, maintain the versions, tell you what's wrong if, there's, if something's wrong with your environment, so, th so that you can just focus on building your product. It also comes with a series of templates. Nobody wants to start with the blank screen. Um, so these templates can bootstrap product folders, um, set up the, the environment for you, so that you can just write the smart contract and the app. So if you just want to build a smart contract, you can use smart contract templates like TealScript and Puya. Um, but if you want to just build out the front end, you don't want to deal with smart contracts, we have a front end template that has wallet integration. If you want to do both, you can use the full stack template. When you're building blockchain as application, you don't want to be building on mainnet with real money and slow uh, block time. So um, Allocate makes it super easy for you to launch a local blockchain on your computer so that you can safely and privately test your code. It also comes with a high-level utility framework that um, provides a series of utility functions that have pre-configured settings so that you don't have to manually configure everything when you're um, interacting with the blockchain and the smart contract. You can just use this right out of the box and keep your code simple, short, um, and shorten your developer uh, development uh, phase. All right, now let's talk about smart contract languages. On Ethereum, the two most prominent languages are Solidity and Viper where Solidity is a JavaScript-like language and Viper is a Python-like language. Well, the dynamic is quite similar in Algorand. Now, um, on Algorand, you will be able to write smart contracts with native Python and native TypeScript. And yes, I mean you can write uh, just Python code or TypeScript code with 100% the same syntax, um, and it will you will be writing an Algorand smart contract. So now, the narrative has changed on Algorand. You don't have to learn a new smart contract language. All you need to do is, if you're a Python or a TypeScript developer, you already know um, how to build a smart contract. And you just need to learn a, a little subset of data types and Algorand-specific functions um, to build a smart contract. So let's see how this is possible. When you're writing smart contract with Python code, uh, we built this compiler called Puya, and that's going to compile your Python code down into Teal, which is the low-level assembly smart contract language that the AVM understands. Now, the, what's powerful about this is that your smart contract code can leverage all of the popular Python developer tools available. So the linters and the formatters that are available for Python, it works here as well. So you, the developer experience will be very similar to building a Python project. Now, if you're a TypeScript or a Solidity developer, I recommend you check out TealScript. So TealScript is a compiler that compiles the TypeScript code into Teal code. And again, 100% uh, same syntax with TypeScript. It, lever it can leverage all of the linters and um, formatters available for TypeScript. So the, the developer experience will be same as building a TypeScript project. So smart contract on Algorand is easy. And it's not just easy for Web3 developers, but we made it easy for any type of developer. Because you, this is one of the biggest obstacles for blockchain adoption. If you're a Web2 company, but you want to try out blockchain or build a blockchain product, you, you either have to train your developer to learn your smart contract language or hire an expensive blockchain developer. But now in Algorand, if your developer know Python or TypeScript, they already know. They just need to learn this little subset of Algorand-specific um, details, and they can get straight to building. So you can spend less time training, less time hiring, and more on building your product.